Hey guys, Rafer here, and today I'm going to talk about Camouflage by Kyle Gold, illustrated by Rukas. Um, and uh, I've started reading this one a couple times over the years. Uh, I was asked by uh, someone on the YouTube comments if I could do it, uh, uh, Roland Corpus, so hi. Um, and I'd be, yeah, like I kept trying, I, I tried reading the, uh, the first draft that Kyle Gold published on FA way back in 2013, and it finished, uh, yeah, so it's June 2013, and ran through till February 2014, so about like six months or so, and, um, yeah, like, I always got to, um, around about when, um, uh, the main kind of plot starts kicking in, um, so, Camouflage is, I think it's probably one of his lesser known novels, um, so it follows, um, Danilo, who's this white tiger, who is going to his first year at, uh, Université in, um, in Tigui, in, uh, in France, and Tigui is, uh, Lyon, uh, in the Forrester universe, which, um, this is set in. So if you're familiar with the Forrester universe, it's typically Carl Gold's pseudo world for furries. Um, so like basically the Devin Lee books are there, um, and then like um, he, some of his novellas and stuff like that. But yeah, I think I would have liked to have read the acknowledgements parts at the back where it does mention that Tigui is um, a Leon, because I think that would have helped me imagine it a bit better since I'm I know it was in, like, France, but I don't know towns and cities or whatever. Um, but that's just my minor nitpick. Um, so, yeah, so Danilo is going to university, uh, and he's uh, somewhat chased out of class. He's, I don't know, I it's, it's just the starting of it, um, Danilo's character just really just bores me. He's sort of bullied out of class, like, he leaves uh, in a hurry before, like, the day starts, and then he, he runs down and hides underneath a bridge on, like, the, the River Sion, um, and there, while he's hiding out, he accidentally drops his phone, uh, in the river, and when he jumps in the river to get, he, or falls in the river, <laughs> trying to get his phone, um, he, when he re-emerges, he's back 500 years, in 1508, uh, to go and he's rescued from the water by an otter called Luke and this mouse called uh, Theodore, uh, who are on the run from the, the city guard, and he, he goes along with them. Um, and so the interesting thing there is uh, he can't understand why he can understand um, like old Gallic, like old French, uh, or why that his new companions remind him or look exactly like his friends in the modern day. Except for Luke, the otter, who he's never met before. But Theodore looks like Tay. He's, um, he's, uh, but the guy he's interested in that he met at the gay club. Um, and then as it goes on, there's other people. So, like, the two bullies, uh, Cobb and George, a, a black wolf and a, a stag. Um, they're back there in history, um, as well. And, and I think where it falls for me is, like, kind of the plot. It's like, I know it's kind of Dylan O's character, where he does, he's not sure what to do, no direction, whatever. And, like, he's kind of just resolving, for just to kind of, like, survive and go along and work out what's going on. But because he, he's a bit of a wet blanket, it's it's not really, he's not really engaging straight up. You just, at least I just found myself just, like, reading to see where the story went, because I always kind of stopped there. And where it does go is, like, there's the group of friends that he met when he came in, um, Luke and Theodore, uh, homosexuals, and they're somewhat on the run from the church, and the, the local bishop and archbishop are uh, violently persecuting um, people caught doing acts of Sodom and all that. And, um, yeah, it's one of those things where it's like, I really like to read um, the references that Carl Gold mentions at the end, so like get more of a, a stronger picture of what it was like back in those days, because it's a little bit opposed to what my general understanding is, um, <laughs> uh, history and stuff like that, where, you know, like, 
Like, yeah, but I'm not saying he's wrong. It's just like, um, I just want to know... Yeah, I'm more interested in, like, how how true it, it is and, like, how persecuted it is. And, like, because uh, I know, obviously, the evidence would be quite uh, poor um, in terms of accounts because probably the only people writing accounts <laughs> are the winners. Um, yeah, other than that, it's, a, it's just a... It's an alright story. It really didn't catch me. Um, there is some... A bit more d uh, darker tones than Cargold's typical writing. There was some, uh, I guess, sexual mutilation um, towards the end. So I guess a bit of a warning. Um, uh, but I think really the only thing that really stood out to me was the ending. I quite liked it as opposed to some of the other ones that like left me like, oh, uh, what? <laughs> and I had to sit on it. But this one, it's like, oh, wow, this is a really cool ending. Like, solid. But I think that's, um, I, th I think probably a part of it is because, like, Danilo came an interesting character by the end of it. <laughs> but that's just, uh, I don't know, this is my feeling on it. Um, but I think also a lot of it was, like, just, like, uh, you know, it being a rough time for me personally this year. And the last thing that I want to care about is this, like, <laughs> preppy British schoolboy twat, like, worried about being, like... It, Oh, just whatever <laughs> in school, and I'm just like I don't care. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I don't know. This is gonna be short. I wasn't planning on talking too long. Like I stopped doing these for a reason, as this is probably evident. Um, um, I haven't been reading too much this year personally. I was reading um, uh, the some more like non-fiction books uh, I was reading this one The Psychopath a bit I was reading this one book The Psychopath Epidemic by Cameron Riley which is really interesting um and then I've got like other non-fiction books to read like Manu Manufacturing Consent by Noam Chomsky uh The History of Asses um on the CIA by Tim Weissman and like other interesting books I've kind of stepped away from furry like, definitely, uh, this year and last year, I've just, like, uh, just, you know, like, <laughs> America in general, I just, like, I just don't care. I mean, like, obviously, I do care. What happens there affects everyone in the world, but it's just, like, especially the fairy side of it. It's just, like, oh, I just, like, I finally, you know, got rid of my Twitter. So, like, you know, and it's now just, yeah, it, it's just depressing because now all Twitter does is send me emails to look at it. It's just like, eee. So, like, yeah, kind of left that. So, yeah. And, yeah. I just, I've just really distanced myself from the fairy community this past year. Which is probably why I haven't been reading. Because, um, yeah, I just, yeah, just felt very, the same arguments and whatever. Um, but, yeah. So, uh, I, I do recommend Camouflage, it's, it's solid, it's, I don't, I don't know, it's, maybe I'd like it later, maybe I'd have to hear someone's interpretation on it, and I can get more into it, but, I mean, I, I have it, <laughs> um, 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 other things, I, yeah, I, I really don't like Rukas's work in this one in particular. Um, I think, like, every illustration, like, is, is, like, it kind of de departs a bit too much from the depictions in the book. It's just, like, there's, like, descriptions of someone wearing clothes like this, and the, the picture's completely different, and, uh... <laughs> And then, like, there's other things that's like, oh, that would make a better illustration, but, like, pretty much all of them will just, like, all, like, solo pin-up illustrations, which is very boring. Um, so, like, yeah, it might be worth it just to <laughs> get the ebook. like, you're not going to miss out too much. Um, um, but, yeah, so... Uh, I prob it probably has missed it. Fur Planet did have a, a Black Friday, Cyber Monday sale this weekend. Um, <clears throat> when I'm recording it. Um, but I believe the ebook's fairly cheap on Bad Doc Books. Uh, you can buy the novel from furplanet.com. Uh, I'm pretty sure I have seen it supplied on rabbitvalley.com. Um, uh, 
who knows what Sofa Wolf is doing these days. Um, Jaffa Books doesn't exist. Um, yeah, you, I wouldn't recommend buying it from Amazon. Um, yeah, it's just, yes, it's a very, it's a bit of a like sad state, like very publishing as well. It's just like. Yeah, the few people I still talk to, they're like, I haven't heard back from Fur Planet for like a year and a half now about something I sent in like a year and a half ago. It's just like, uh, yeah, I, I you, you can't you can't blame them, but at the end of the day, they, unfortunately, they have full time jobs and then doing another, you know, uh, unpaid full time job pretty much, um, because they enjoy it and they've really probably getting quite hard. To do both. Mm. Oh, so <laughs> that's my shitty camouflage review. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. I I really don't see myself doing these anymore. Um, just because it's it's just not enjoyable. Um, so yeah. <laughs> well, it's nice to see uh, whoever again. Um, I've been really far, and I'll catch you later. <laughs>